All right. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody's Monday? Tuesday. Jeez. Quarantine's getting to me. My brain doesn't even know what day of the week it is. It's Tuesday. Okay. So today, today we are looking at volume day one live notes. There is a lot of various different attachments for today's lesson. However, the only thing that we need to complete is the volume day one Google Slides. There is a lot of other attachments, a lot of other videos to kind of help to uh, to allow for other knowledge to happen with regards to, you know, we've we've all talked about how sometimes in the middle of class we may be teaching it one way and, and, and then we teach it another way the second day and you understand it. So that's why there's a ton of Khan Academies and, and different videos for you guys to watch. Now, there are three shapes that we're going to be trying to determine the volume of. Okay, here's our first one. Okay, this is a cylinder. I know it's not the greatest drawing, but this is what a cylinder is. Now, the formula is V equals pi R squared H. That's a lot of letters right there. And maybe some of us are unsure of what they mean. Sorry, I had to reach for my handy dandy pen container. Okay, well, V stands for volume. Okay, that's the first thing. So the volume is equal to, and that little shape is just pi, like we talked about. Not P-I-E, parents, not like apple or blueberry or pumpkin. It's pi. Now, that is also really 3.14. We'll get to that momentarily. All right. Now, we have two other letters that are in this formula. The first one is radius. That's what R stands for. And the last one is height. So when I'm looking at this shape, this is going to be our height, how tall the cylinder is. And, and again, a cylinder could be like a can of Coke, for example, or a monster or a Red Bull, right? Anything in a can, the tomato soup as well. How tall is the container, the height? Now radius. Now radius deals with the top of the cylinder, the shape here. Okay, and the top of that is a circle. So when I'm talking about the radius, I'm talking about the center to half of the circle. That's what the radius is. Okay, it's half of the circle from the outside to the middle. If we're going to talk about a pizza, it's like kind of going from the crust to the middle of the pizza. That is what the radius is. Now, the other thing that happens with circles is sometimes they don't tell you what half is. Instead, they tell you the full length from crust to crust. That is called the diameter. Let's say that I give you the diameter and I want the radius. Well, it's just to go from, get a different color pen, to go from diameter to radius, you would just take the diameter and divide it by two or cut it in half. That's what the radius is. So for example, if I tell you that my diameter is equal to four, well, that means that the radius would just be equal to two. So you just cut it in half. That's how you go from diameter to radius. So this is the formula for cylinder. We've got a lot more people joining. We've kind of identified and, and defined what each of those different things are. Now, if you have one at home, calculator is needed for this lesson. If you do not have a calculator at home, iPhone is perfectly fine. So either of these two things will be perfectly fine. And in, if you do not have a calculator or have a smartphone, you could always use your computer and go on Google and use the calculator. So I'm going to be looking at number one for the radius example. Okay, I'm going to be doing one problem of each. Let's start with the radi uh, the cylinder one. Now, when I look at the first slide, when it comes to the cylinder, the first problem says that the radius was three centimeters. Okay. 
It also told me that the height was equal to six centimeters. <clears throat> so we are going to plug in this information for number one, again, on the cylinder page into the formula. Back in November, we did Pythagorean's theorem where we would write the formula down. We strongly recommend that you do the same thing. So the volume of a cylinder is pi times radius squared. I'm now going to plug in the information. It will now be that the volume is equal to pi times radius 3, 3 squared times the height 6. And now we are going to solve it. Again, if you do not have a calculator, I'm going to kind of go step by step on how you can potentially do this, right? 3 squared is really 3 times 3, which is really 9. So it's 9 times 6 times pi equals the volume. 9 times 6 is 54. So really the volume is equal to pi times 54. Now, if you have a calculator, I have the TI-30... XS, nothing special. Okay. It does have a pi button on it. I could do pi times 54. My answer I get is 169.646. That's how I did it in my calculator. Now, if I don't, if I have, I don't have a high tech calculator. What you can do is whenever you see pi, use 3.14. And I'll say that again. If you do not have one of these high-tech calculators that has a pi button, like mine does, just use 3.14. Now, some of you are going to say, okay, as I'm watching this video, I did 3.14 times 54. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Malone. When I did that, I got 169.56. When you did it, you got 169.646. That is going to happen. The reason why is because when I use the pi button in my calculator, I'm using more digits past the four. If you do not have a calculator, you're just using 3.14, your answer is going to be a little off. For these problems, we typically round them. For example, in my problem, I probably would have rounded it to 169.65, right? The four and the six goes up. I might even have rounded it up to 169.7. Which is kind of close to 170. Will the same thing happen here? Will it be 169.6 and the same thing? It's kind of roughly around 170. So notice how I still got close to the same answer for both ways. So it's not like it's impossible to not have a calculator. Oh, I can't do this. I don't have a calculator. You don't need it. You could use your phone. And to prove it, I'll use my iPhone too. Now, sometimes you have to turn off the portrait lock, for example, on your iPhone for your calculator to get really high tech and, and really sophisticated. All right. But again, if I just did 3.14 times 54, 169.56. So this is my answer for number one. You could either have placed... You know, Again, if I, I if we had to ask you to go to two spots after the decimal, you could have said 169.65. Or for some of us who don't use the scientific or the fancy calculator, 169.56, right? If we want to round it to the nearest one decimal, you could have said 0.7 or 0.6. Or to the nearest whole number, you could have said 170. So as long as your answer is close to these two, totally fine. Okay. Again, if we were in school, everyone would have a calculator. We would tell you to go down this avenue. We're trying to adjust with everybody being home and some people may or may not actually have a calculator. So don't stress if you do or don't. Again, you could use your phone. And again, if you don't have a phone, you could just go into Google and you can type them in. Okay. 
So again, this is number one on today's classwork for cylinders, all right? Again, if you're gonna rewatch this video, the first couple minutes, I define the equation. I talk about all the different parts. So this is cylinder, the first one, okay? The second one, my favorite. Why is it my favorite? Because it's a cone, not the cone heads. Great movie, by the way, but ice cream cones. I love me some ice cream. Now, the formula for this is the volume is equal to one third times pi times radius squared times the height. Again, to define, just like in the beginning of this video, volume equals one third times pi. Again, as a reminder, I'll use it in red this time. This could also be 3.14. Radius, we did talk about. Radius is the top circle halfway through. That's what R stands for. And then the height, again, the height would be the top of the cone to the bottom of the cone. So for this, I'm going to be looking at number six on the cone worksheet. Okay, why did I pick this one? because there's some decimals. And a couple of you are watching this right now, getting a couple of bugaboos. I see decimals. First thing I recommend, we recommend, volume equals one-third times pi times radius squared times the height. Write the formula down. It helps. Now in number six, it tells you that the radius is equal to 1.4 it tells you that the height is equal to 2.2. Now parents, this is what we always tell your kids to do. We tell them to write the formula down. And, and I think a lot of parents are gonna watch and go, all right, well, it seems very simple, right? R, 1.4, plug it in. H, 2.2, plug it in. Kids, right? You, we did the same thing for Pythagorean theorem in November. You guys were very successful. Let's rewrite the equation now with our new information. Volume is equal to one third times pi times 1.4 squared times the height. Now we have some computing to do. Now we have some math to do. Again, if you have a calculator like I do, I could literally at this point type in this entire problem and get my answer. However, I'm going to take it nice and slow just to explain how I got my answer. First thing I'm going to do is deal with the exponent. 1.4 squared. Again, that's really 1.4 times 1.4. It becomes 1.96. I'm going to bring everything else down. I have not touched 2.2. Have not touched pi. Have not touched one third. Bring down my equal sign. Bring down my volume. Now everything's held together by multiplication, so there is no limit to what has to go first, what goes second. I'm going to do 1.96 times 2.2. Okay. Now, at that point, this gives me 4.312. Again, I did nothing to pi. I've done nothing to one third. I've done nothing to the equal sign or the volume. Okay, and I'm using orange to show the, the change I have. Now, the next thing I'm going to try and do is I'm going to do one third times 4.312. I'm going to leave out pi, okay? So 4.312 times one third. When I do that, I got this number, 1.4373, and that three continued on, times pi equals volume. Don't worry, I'm going to come back and kind of show how we could change things up, modify it a little bit. And the last step, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply that number by pi. And I get that my answer, the volume is equal to 4.515. And I kind of just shut it down there. After that, the calculator would say 515841. If I'm going to round and stick with this problem, it's about 4.52. If I wanted to round it again, it's about four and a half, 4.5. And if I round it one more time, it's kind of close to five, right? And again, all of this math I did was done on this calculator. 
if I don't have this calculator, now I'm using my iPhone, all right? So instead of some modifications I might want to do, okay, the first thing is I may not know what one third is, all right? Well, one third is really saying one divided by three. Okay, so this is really 0 0.3 repeating. Again, we said that pi, we were going to use 3.14. So I think these are the two problems that some of us may want to, or two uh, numbers we may want to kind of modify using our iPhone. But for the other ones, again, no problems here. And I'll even go the long drawn out process. 1.4 times 1.4. 1.96. Okay, check. I got the same thing there. 1.96 times 2.2. 4.312. Got the same thing as well. Okay. Now I could do the 4.132, and I'm going to have to do this on here. 0 0.3. Okay, so if I decided to do 4.312 times 0 0.3. Okay. This is actually going to become 1.2936. All right. A little bit different when I did this number times this number. Okay. Stay with me. It's going to be okay. Take, let's round this up to 1.3. Again, this number became 1.3. Rounding, let's just do 1.3 times 3.14. 1.3 times 3.14. Oops, 3.14. I got 4.082, which rounds to be 4.1. Perfectly fine answer for this for today. Now, some people are thinking, wait, 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 hold on a second, hold on a second, Mr. Malone. You had 4.5, and now you're saying 4.082, and you're saying this is okay? Yes. Why is it okay for right now? Okay? Again, we're at home. Some of us don't have calculators. We're using our resources. You're using your iPhone. It's going to be very hard to take this as a iPhone number. Why? Because it's supposed to be 0 0.3333333333 for eternity. I dropped it. I stopped it and made it become 0 0.3. I rounded it. Because I rounded it here, that changed the number. I'm not technically honoring what the number really stands for. I did the second time here. It was 1.2936. I changed it to 1.3. Again, I'm not actually using the number it stands for. It's kind of like if you're sitting here saying, I got about 700 followers on Instagram. Do you really have 700 followers or did you kind of round up, right? And again, I'm not using the full pie. I'm only using 3.14. So for this, it's okay. It's roughly about the same answer. It's a little off. And it's only because I've rounded it, okay, parents? So, like, I've rounded the number to make it easier. If you're working with your kid on this assignment and you need to round it, by all means, it's fine. Just make sure that your rounding makes sense, right? I'm not going to sit here and say that 0 0.3 repeating should be 0 0.4. That's that's not true. It's 3 for eternity. It would not go up. It would just stay 0 0.3. And for this one, right, it's 0 0.2936. I just bumped it up and said to 3. Could you have left it as 0 0.3? or 1.29? Sure, you could have, right? Your answer would have been a little bit different as well. Okay, the third and the final one. Okay, the third and the final shape. A sphere. Kind of looks, kind of looks a little three-dimensional. Don't judge me. Volume equals four thirds times pi times the radius cubed. No new symbols, no new concepts in here. Uh, obviously, four-thirds is new. Okay, don't get technical with me. All right. I thought it was Monday. But pi is still the same. Okay, again, if you're using your iPhone, it's just going to be 3.14. Again, the radius, the radius is halfway through that circle, right? Now, I know a sphere. A sphere is like a basketball, a soccer ball, something, you know, three-dimensional. 
its essence, again, still a circle, so it's still the radius. And again, if you get diameter for this problem, you'll go back, take a look at um, the beginning of this video where I define what a radius versus diameter is. But we're going to look at number 11. Okay, volume equals four thirds times pi times the radius to the third. I'm writing the formulas down. In number 11, they say that four centimeters is equal to the radius. Plug it in, plug it in. Four thirds times pi times four cubed. This is my volume. Got to do four cubed. Four cubed is really four times four times four. Four to the third is 64. Bring down the pi. Bring down the four thirds equals the volume. Now I'm going to do two ways here, right? I'm going to do four thirds times 3.14 times 64. And I'm also going to do actually with the pi button, okay? So again, four to the th four over three times pi times 64. I'm going to do all one big swoop, going to do all this together, right? Multiply to all three. 268.0825. I would have rounded that to 268.1. Called it a day. Okay, let's go to this volume now. Let's do four thirds times 3.14 times 64. All of it all together. 267.946. I would have rounded this to 268. Notice the similarities of how close they are to one another. Both answers are good. Whether you have an iPhone and you're just using 3.14 or whether you're using a calculator like I did and just running through. Okay. The main thing to take away here is that you should be a writing down the formula for the shape. Okay. That is something that at the test level, right? If we were giving you a test on this, the formulas would be given to you. Oh, thank God. Right, you don't have to memorize these formulas. Right, even on the the even on like the state tests, even on placement tests for different high schools, you know, online they have a link, gives you all the formulas, and even gives you Pythagorean's theorem as well. So the formulas will be given to you. You have to know that R is radius. You have to know that pi could be also three point one four. Okay. So today we want you to work on this assignment it's, you have today and tomorrow as well to work on it. Today I just went over one problem from each. Take the time today to do them on your own. Tomorrow I will go live again. If you have questions on specific problems, you want to know, hey, is this a good decimal? Today you can message us, message us on GoGuardian and say, hey, is this a good decimal for this problem? Here's my equation. That's the first thing we're going to ask you, myself, Mr. Stanwell, Miss Ivo. We're going to be like, what was your equation? Right? I want to know. For number 11, hey, Mr. Malone, this was my equation. I did four thirds times pi times four to the third. Maybe you put the radius for the height, height for the radius, et cetera. Okay, good luck. And we'll be talking to you guys on GoGuardian.